Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to K News for week 9, 2017. There are two launches this week and the first one is an Atlas V from the United Launch Alliance, today at 17.50 UTC. This time Atlas will launch in its 401 configuration with only one core booster, an upper stage and a 4 meter wide fairing. On top is a secret payload for the National Reconnaissance Office or NRO for short. However, it will most likely be a pair of intruder satellites, intruder 8A and 8B for the Navy. As usual launch details are kept secret, but if these are intruder satellites they will be shot in an ink light low earth orbit. From there they will circle around the globe and listen to radio signals on sea. Two satellites receiving the same signal allows them to locate the source precisely and monitor the seas. The second launch this week is going to be the maiden flight of the Chinese Kaichu 2A rocket. Should it really launch it will take off from Jichen on Thursday. However, I think it's not officially announced so far and I would not count on a livestream. Kaichu 2A is based on two ballistic missiles from which one is used as the first stage and the other one is used twice as side mounted boosters. On top are two smaller stages which bring up to 2 tons to a low earth orbit. The payload is called Tiankong 1, similar to their first space station Tiangong 1. Tiankong with K stands for sky however and there is not much more I can tell you about it. It's always tricky to research Chinese launches but I try. Launching from Jichen it will probably head east and because the launch site is located on a high latitude it will soon swing south for a highly inclined low earth orbit. As the rocket goes through its staging let me talk a little about past week which was pretty exciting. I sadly missed most of it because I was ill but it went really viral on the internet so I'm sure you already heard about it. NASA has found new clues about exoplanets orbiting in the so called TRAPPIST-1 system. It's currently 39.5 light years away and the observation was made with the Spitzer Space Telescope. The telescope was launched in 2003 and is in an orbit around the sun trailing behind earth. There it is not stationary and it drifts away a few million kilometers per year but it is barely operational at this point anyways. Its estimated lifespan was rather short because it has some coolant on board for its instruments which ran out in 2009. Since then only a few instruments are left but they were enough to find exoplanets. A little fun fact, Spitzer or Spitzer is the German word for sharpener which you use to sharpen your pencils. The Spitzer Space Telescope was built to detect infrared radiation and is therefore a perfect match for the red dwarf star TRAPPIST-1. Being 10 times smaller than our sun, the fusion reaction inside its core is much less powerful and the star produces light in a lower so called spectrum of light. That basically means it produces a lot invisible infrared light we cannot see but Spitzer can. The telescope found new exoplanets and the total number grew to 7 in the TRAPPIST-1 system. The very very special thing about those is they are all about the size of the earth and 3 of them are even in its star's habitable zone. Now what I want to focus on is getting there because going to another star is not as easy as it sounds. I often read that it would take x amount of years traveling at voyagers or new horizon speed for example. That is of course not how we deal with transfers between celestial bodies. You can't just fly towards TRAPPIST and expect to get there because orbital mechanics. Our sun orbits the center of the Milky Way at round about 200 km per second which means moving in roughly a straight line towards TRAPPIST you had to accelerate your spacecraft many times faster than that so you could pretty much neglect the effects of orbital mechanics. As an example I can launch a probe to the moon by simply burning towards it. If my speed is high enough I don't have to worry about complex trajectories at all, I just have to make sure to carry enough fuel to get rid of all that excess speed before I smash into the surface. Speaking of the moon, just yesterday SpaceX announced that two private citizens paid for a trip around the moon in 2018. Yes, these are no trained astronauts and will be the first human to visit the moon after the Apollo era. There are no details released about the mission yet but I will keep you updated on that one in the future. Now back to TRAPPIST-1, to give you an overview of how far away the star is, this is our galaxy, the Milky Way as pictured by NASA. The original picture has a total of 5000 pixels and our galaxy is 100,000 light years in diameter. This means a single pixel of this image, which I link in the description, is 200 light years across. Traveling to TRAPPIST-1 you couldn't even draw a line because the distance would be only one fifth of a pixel. As close as it seems, building chemical rockets which could accelerate spacecraft to let's say thousands of kilometers per second is just not possible. I did the math and calculated the amount of fuel you would need with extremely efficient and massless nuclear engines to accelerate a 1 kg payload to 1000 kilometers per second. 
it's 10 to the power of 54 kilograms or 600 billion Milky Way masses. Yes, you would need 600 billion times more fuel mass than mass exists in our own galaxy just to reach 1000 km per second with a 1 kilogram payload. I believe that's even more mass than our complete universe has combined so it's safe to say that it's impossible. That is of course only true for rockets which need some kind of propellant. Technologies to reach other stars have yet to be developed but there are some proposals already like shooting freaking laser beams at solar sails. Now in the end a big shout out to my patrons who support my monthly crowdfunding campaign. Thanks a lot and if you want to contribute as well simply follow the link in the description or in the end of the video. Ok, that shall conclude episode 75 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.